In this video we're gonna start building a 2D asteroid style game. At the end we're gonna have a game that looks like this. We have a top-down player character that can shoot asteroids and those asteroids will spawn smaller asteroids. Let's get started. Let's start building this game. I have an empty project with some assets imported in. Let's start by creating the main scene. I will call this scene simply world and this will be the scene that all the action takes place. Let's save this inside the rest folder and I'm gonna go inside my project settings and do some changes. We want to set the window size to 1280 by 720 and let's turn our stretch mode to 2D and our aspect ratio to keep. The next thing I want to change is the default clear color which is under rendering environment. I want to set this to be black because our game will be set in space and I don't want to create a color rect or a sprite node to create a background image. I'm just going to use this default clear color as my background. Great, let's save this and let's set this as the main scene. And now we can start to create the different parts of our game. The first thing that comes into mind is the player. So let's start by creating the player character. I'm going to create a couple of new folders characters and player. So let's create a new scene. This is going to be a kinematic body. Let's call this the player and let's save it inside that folder that we just created. This is going to have a sprite, a collision, polygon, 2D, for now and we'll think about the other things later on when we build some of the functionality of the player. As for the sprite, let's choose this player ship texture here from our assets. And we're actually gonna scale this down to be 0.5 by 0.5. Let's create a collision shape for this. We're not trying to be perfect, we just want to get the gist of it. So it doesn't have to be symmetrical or anything because it's not going to be a... The precision isn't going to be super, super important. This will do just fine. Okay, great. Actually, what I wanted to do was I want to, before I create this collision polygon, I want to rotate this 90 degrees. So let's rotate the sprite by 90 degrees because this is going to make it easier to move the character later on in my script. So now what we want to do is we can either rotate this collision shape as well, which should be fine. I'm not sure if this will be problematic later, but we can also delete all of these, this and create it again, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now let's instance the player inside of the world scene. Let's place him in the middle. Let's run the game. Looks good. And now we need to make this player character move. To do that, let's create a script on the player. So what type of movement do we want to have for the player? So the player is a spaceship, right? And we want the spaceship to accelerate in a certain direction. And then we don't want it to instantly stop. We want it to slowly lose its speed. And we want the player to use the left and the right arrows to rotate the ship 
and when we press the up key or the back key, we can move in the direction that the player chooses to move, move in using the arrow keys, left and right. Okay, before we get into scripting, let's create some input actions. Move forward, move back, strafe right and strafe left. Let's also create one for shooting as well. I'm going to use the WSD keys. You can also use the arrow keys, but I just find it more convenient to use WSD. WS and strafe right is going to be D, strafe left is going to be A, shooting, I will use the spacebar. Great, let's go back inside the script and let's define the physics process function here. I'm going to create some variables that I'm going to use to make the player move. Input vector, this is going to be a vector 2. We need a velocity, which is also going to be a vector 2. We need a variable for acceleration. This will be an integer and let's set this to be, let's actually turn this into an export variable. Let's set this to something like 300. And let's see, let's start writing some code. At the beginning of my function, I want to get some input to my input vector. I'm going to use the X property of it. I'm going to get input, get action strength. Move forward, minus input, get action strength. Move back. Let's set the velocity using this vector. Velocity.x equals, let's actually set the whole vector. Velocity equals vector2, input vector x times, let's set this to be plus equals because we're going to accelerate instead of setting a fixed speed. Acceleration. And for, for the y, let's give it a zero. And finally, let's call move and slide, which is a built-in function for kinematic body. And we need to give this a vector to, and let's see if this works. So if I press W, my character just goes blazingly fast. And if I press back, my player goes back. The problem here is we're not multiplying this with Delta. And this will make sure that it doesn't go crazy fast. And looks like it's working. Let's clamp this value so, so that we don't accelerate to a very, very high speed. So let's say velocity.x equals clamp velocity.x. Let's define a max speed. This can be like 500. So we want to clamp the velocity in between negative max speed and positive max speed. Because we can also go in the opposite direction. Okay, we should do this for the y as well. So let's clamp velocity.y in between the max speed and the, and the negative max speed as well. And now if we print the velocity. I'm also going to set the velocity back to the return value of move and slide. If we print it, we should max out at 500. As you can see from the print statements. Great. We might want to increase this acceleration because it seems to be a little too slow right now. And this is more like it. Great. Okay, now we want to make the player rotate using the A and the D keys. In order to make the player rotate, we can just use the rotation property of the player. And if I actually increment this 
rotation, let's say by one every frame, let's multiply that by delta, you'll actually see that the player is rotating clockwise. Let's increment this by negative one. And if so, you will see that it's rotating counterclockwise. We can use this fact with our input actions in order to give the player the ability to rotate. So after we get input for move forward and move back, let's also get some input for rotating. I'm going to define some variables for this. And the first one is going to be rotation direction. And this is going to be an integer. And the next one is going to be rotation speed, which I'm going to turn into an export variable. This is actually going to be a float instead of an integer. Now that I remember, let's set this to be 3.5. So the rotation direction variable is going to determine whether we're, we're rotating towards the left or the right, and the speed will determine the speed at which we rotate. So at the start of every frame, we're going to set the rotation direction to be zero. And after that, we're going to use the strafe right and strafe left input actions to set it to either positive one or negative one. Let's increment it instead of assigning so that if we press them both at the same time, they end up becoming zero. Whether if we assign it, if we press them both at the same time, we're going to get the last one. Okay, now at the start of every frame, we're setting the rotation direction to be zero. And after that, we're setting it to either one if we're pressing down straight right or negative one if we're pressing down straight left. So this means rotation direction can only be one, negative one or zero at any given time. So let's use this variable instead of this fixed number here to set the, the direction of the rotation. And let's also use that rotation speed variable here to change the speed of the rotation. Let's try this. And as you can see, I can use A and D in order to set the rotation of the player. Now we can rotate the player sprite or the player object, right? But we're still moving horizontally. So let's fix that. What determines the way that we move? It's the velocity vector, right? So we, we need to change the velocity vector in order to go in a different direction. Let's go to line 19 and let's actually rotate this velocity vector by the player's rotation. Let's see what this looks like. So I can rotate and if I press forward, I can go in my desired direction. We are a bit too fast actually. So let's turn down the max speed to be like 300. Now I can freely move, which is exactly what we want. Yeah, the acceleration should also come down to like 500. Okay, this is more like it. There's still one more problem. If I press forward and I take my finger off the key, I'm still accelerating in the same amount. We want to create a friction variable that we're going to use to interpolate the player's speed to zero once the player stops giving the move forward input. So let's create a new variable. This is going to be a float and we're going to call this friction weight and let's set this to be 0.1 for now. So after setting the velocity, 
let's check if the input vector dot x is zero. If it is, that means we're not pressing move forward or move back. So we can start applying friction to our velocity. This will be very simple. We just need to set the velocity to its linearly interpolated version. We want to interpolate velocity down to velocity vector to zero. And we want to use that friction weight variable to determine how fast we're going to interpolate down to vector to zero. And this should work just fine. Let's print and say applying friction. Let's print out the velocity as well. So as you can see, if I move and stop moving, I can see that I'm interpolating down to zero. Let's also do one more check here. Let's say and velocity isn't equal to vector two dot zero. So that when we start the game, we don't try to apply friction because we don't have any velocity. There's one more optimization we want to do here. We don't want to keep interpolating down when we reach a very, very small number. So let's check if, for example, velocity.x is less than or equal to 0 0.1. If this is the case, let's just set the velocity.x to zero. And we're gonna do the same for y. If velocity.y is less than or equal to 0 0.1, let's just set it to zero so that we don't bother interpolating to a very, very, very small number. Now, this should work perfectly. There's a slight problem. We're getting some weird behavior. And the problem is, we're checking if velocity.x is less than or equal to 0 0.1. But remember, this velocity.x can be negative as well. So what we need to do is we need to get the absolute value of this and check for that instead of just checking for velocity.x or velocity.y. And now this should work as expected. And if you want the player to slide more, you can play with this friction weight variable. So if I set this to be like 0 0.01, which is a very small number, the player will still stop, but it's gonna take it more time. So as you can see, it's taking a while for the player to stop. Great, let's get rid of this print statement here. And we're basically done with our player character here. We still need to implement shooting and other stuff, but that's gonna be a tutorial for another time. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like and comment. I will see you in the next one.